Bang! Neves Knives. I'm Jared, and today I got a little rant, and I hope knife companies or people that represent knife companies are watching this, because I'm talking to you. I'm talking to all knife companies. If your knife isn't on this table, I'm still talking to you. I'm talking to all of them, because everybody's guilty of this. Every knife company is guilty of this. And what are we talking about? We're talking about plunge grinds. And I know you guys have heard me talk about it before, but I'm about to go on a rant. So buckle up. So plunge grinds. For some reason, knife companies think that the sharpening choil is what matters. It doesn't. It's not about the sharpening choil. Yes, that's part of it, but you can add a sharpening choil and still mess up the choil because it's about the plunge grind. Now, when we get knives, knives most of the time have a burnt edge. It's just the way it is. And you, you can watch cut tests that prove this over and over and over again that factory edges are not as good as quality of a, a sharpened edge you know at home or uh either by a system or by a freehand whatever the point is is that the the belts the belt finishes that sharpen our knives that we get from the factories most of them or a lot of them have burnt edges so some of us want to remove steel right away. We just want to sharpen that, that factory edge off and sharpen some steel away and get to some good quality steel. When we do that, or even if, let's say you're the guy who says, I want to, I, I don't mind a factory edge. I like a factory edge. Well, it doesn't matter because eventually you're still going to have to sharpen it, right? So when we sharpen it, we don't want that. A smile. Do you see that smile? Why is it called a smile? Because it looks like you're smiling, like you're the side of your cheeks. And you see how they put a sharpening choil here, or what they think is a sharpening choil, but then the plunge grind starts here, where the top of my nail is, and ends, sorry, and ends right on the edge. So now, no matter what, it's going to get a smile. Why not make the plunge grind go straight down to the edge, or just make it separate. Keep the plunge grind away from the edge. Now, you look at some knives where they literally they give you a sharpening choil, but then make the plunge grind go all the way to, you know, past the edge. Because like with this one, it starts right here and ends right here. Why not give me the whole thing? Just go all the way over to here you know, and separate the plunge grind from the top of the edge. I'll show you a good example of one that's done right, even though they're probably guilty of it too. I'm not saying these guys are doing it better. I'm just saying here's an example of one done right. So you see this, the choil is, is a nice big choil, but the plunge grind starts here on this line and ends on this line. So now I have all of this steel right here to remove and sharpen before it hits the plunge grind. Why put a plunge grind directly on the edge? Why do that? You know, even Medford, like when they do it, they always they usually give you a choil, but then what do they do? They literally put the plunge grind right at the edge. It starts here and it plunges down and ends right at the edge. And people are just used to it. People are used to seeing that smile right there on all Medfords. Why? What? You know, maybe it's there the way they do their hollow grinds, but why not make that plunge grind end back here where we can have enough room to remove steel from the edge and sharpen it? multiple times before it looks like it's all beat up because that's what it winds up looking like either one i gotta put my own choil in or two it's gonna look like i hit the plunge grind now like with quiet carries they give you a little um and this one's not too bad because i'm gonna explain why so this one they give you a sharpening choil right the plunge grind is right next to the edge it is so they failed because the plunge grind is right there next to the edge. It literally lands. So now when I sharpen it again, it's had one edge put on it. When I sharpen it again, 
I'm going to start hitting this plunge grind right here. But I can always just add that little notch right there, which is pretty easy to do. So in this case, I can just add a little choil in really quick, very easy with a little round diamond stone. And they didn't put a stop pin in the way back here. So it, I got, you know, I can do it myself. But why not just give you the, the sharpening tool to begin with, with, uh, with the separation from the edge to the, to the plunge grind? Separate it. This one, I had to put in my own sharpening choil. They didn't even come with one. I had to put my own, this is my sharpening choil I put in there because it didn't come with one. Not a big deal. Uh, it's fine. I put one in myself, but should I have to? I mean, this one's had a lot of steel removed from it, but you can see how it's hitting the plunge grind. It's creating a smile. It doesn't look that pretty from being used. It's a knife. It's a tool. It should be used. It's going to have steel removed from it. And that's just, we want to be able to remove steel from the edge. Factory edges usually come burnt. So we're going to have to sharpen it regardless eventually. And I don't like it when I can only sharpen it one time before it starts hitting the plunge grind. My second edge is just going to wind up hitting the plunge grind. This one's had a couple edges put on it, and now I'm at the plunge grind. I'm there. You can see my stone already hit it. And now another thing is when it's like that, your, your stones get beat up. The, the plunge grind hits your stone, and sharpening stones are expensive, guys. They are not cheap. So when they hit the stone, they chip the stones, they, uh, and then they, they create these little nicks on the sharpening choil like you see right there. And... It would just be so much easier if they separate it. Now, Spyderco is a company that actually understands this a little bit better. They understand it's not about the sharpening choil, it's about the plunge grind. So what, what do they do? They don't give you a sharpening choil at all. What they do is they take their plunge grinds and drop them from the thickest point straight down to the edge. So it literally starts here and it just drops straight down to the edge. So there's never a plunge grind to hit. Now, some people don't like this little guy right here because it hits the stone. But for the most part, spider coats are pretty easy to sharpen because they don't have a plunge grind. The plunge grind just goes straight down to the edge. When you have a tapering plunge grind, meaning it starts from the thickest point and slowly goes down to the edge, like we see here, that's when we get issues. Because it's it's like a from right here from the thickest point it slowly drops down to the edge, but it happens to hit the edge rather than separating from the edge from the plunge grind. Just separate it, make it to where I have life to sharpen off of my knife before it starts showing that I'm sharpening and sharpening and sharpening because it makes it look ugly. It hits the stone, so it damages the stones, makes it look so ugly, makes me have to put my own sharpening choil in, which I'm not that worried about putting my own sharpening choil in. It's not that big of a deal as long as I can. Sometimes they make it to where you can't because they put the stop pin there or something. But you're already grinding the knife. You're already adding a choil. You're already taking all these steps. Why not separate the edge from the plunge grind. It's very easy. Separate this part right here, the very edge, the tip of the edge, this part right here, from this part. See the steel right here? All of that, that is all what I have to sharpen. Every time I sharpen, this edge goes up, 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 up. Eventually, yes, it will hit this part. But look at how much steel it's going to be before the edge is up to here. It's a, quite a bit of steel. I'm happy with that. But I don't want it to be my first edge or second edge. Because if it has a burnt edge, like this, this knife right here came with a burnt edge. I used it like once or twice on light duty stuff and the edge went to crap instantly. Now, after sharpening it one time, yes, I got right to good steel. So I'm happy that I got the good steel and the heat treat wasn't messed, wasn't like just all crappy, but 
I had to sharpen it right away. I had to. I didn't have a choice. So to do that, now I'm right there at the plunge grind. I'm already there. So now I'm going to have to add in my own sharpening tool. But they could have just did it from the factory and made my life a lot easier. It makes life easier for the end user, for the sharpener, for the life of the knife, for the way the knife looks, for the stones that the people, you know, that we sharpen with. It just makes life so much easier. So that's my rant, guys. I hope some knife um, or, you know, knife companies or representative of knife companies actually watch this video and don't think I'm talking crap about any of these companies. Every single knife company I am talking to, it's not just because your knife ended up in this story that you're safe, good, or anything. It's all of you. It's all companies. Fix the damn plunge grinds. I love you guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.